Hello, I seem to have a soft filter thing going on on my camera here. So let me just, I'm not sure what's going on. It's not the lighting. I'm, bear with me. Happened the other day when I was speaking to a friend. But there we go. Uh, the camera isn't that important. I'm just plugging something in here so that my battery doesn't run out. And my picture, my voice isn't that important. Hello, Dave. Lovely to see you here. Thank you for joining. And hello, hello, hello. Anyone else who is coming to join us? Michaela, lovely to see you. And I know, the filter. I have no idea what's going on with this. It's, it's very bizarre. Soft focus. Hopefully it's not too distracting. And... Um, yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Anyway, what can you do? So, speaking about your business with confidence, that's what you can do, including when you're somewhere that you are thinking, I'm not sure that people can see me. Do you need to be able to see me? As long as you can hear me, that's what counts. Uh, so please let me know that you can hear me clearly. And that's almost a rhyme. I would... Uh, image is important, but don't worry, it's not distracting. Fabulous. Image is important, but more important than that is being able to carry on in the face of adversity. I could faff around and get stressed, but what's really important is that nobody actually cares about you. I wasn't going to start with this, but Technical challenges happen sometimes to give us inspiration. And one of my key note speeches is your audience don't care about you. Because what your audience care about, what you guys care about, you don't care about me and whether you can see me properly or not. You don't really even care about who I am, what I do, unless who I am and what I do can help you and your business. That's why you're here. So, uh, I've got David and I think Michaela on live, so if you let me know what questions you might have for me around speaking about your business with confidence, then I can come in and address them for you here and live and now. If you're watching this on the replay, then tag me in your question because I am here, there and everywhere this week. I've literally just five minutes ago come off a radio interview and I'm preparing to go to Australia, New Zealand and LA. I fly on Monday. I still haven't fully done my workshop folder yet, but yeah, it's fine. It all happens. So if you have questions, tag me in it so that I will come up in my notifications and I'll know to come and answer. I have awesome clarity in my voice. Well, that's just as well, given what I do. So for those who don't know me very briefly, I am a vocal confidence, communication and public speaking coach and voice vibration sound healer. Ooh, people say, what's sound healing? The very short description is I use voice as a sound healing tool. You may have heard of gong baths and crystal bowls and uh, Tibetan bowls and things like that. The voice is everything that I do and... It is helping people speak with more clarity, confidence and conviction, no matter the situation. So here to specifically uh, this group, thank you so much, David, for inviting me and for inviting us all in to share what we have to share, is obviously for people who run their own businesses. So hence the business focus of speaking about your business with confidence but speaking with clarity, confidence and conviction, no matter the situation, even if you are on a video and something's gone wonky with your camera, so it's all a bit foggy, you can still hear my voice and you care about what you can learn from me. You don't care about me. You don't care whether I've got makeup on, whether I um, am doing this from my living room office or being one of those, you know, wanky consultant coaches who goes, look at me, I'm doing this on the beach with my Maserati behind me, right? As long as whoever you're listening to 
is giving you value and your audience is exactly the same. Your audience don't care about you. What they care about is what you and your skills or your product can do for them. So when you're speaking about your business, always, always, always start with your audience. What is it that you can offer them? What can they take from you that will improve their life in whatever sphere you are looking to improve their life in? David has set up this group for coaches to improve our businesses. It's so most of us, I imagine, are self-employed and therefore our business and our personal life, they're kind of mushed in together. And when I say kind of, I mean completely and absolutely, unless you're by some miracle, you've managed to achieve work life separation as a self-employed person. So when you are speaking to your audience and an audience, by the way, can be one person, it can be a hundred million and we never know how many people these things are going to reach. It can be going into a pitch. It can be speaking to your loved one. So when you are speaking to your audience, remember that they are the center of their universe. We're human beings. Essentially, all human beings are egocentric. And when I say ego, I don't mean, you know, I'm an actress and I've got a big ego. Uh, I mean, your subconscious brain and if you are focused and you're on you, remember your audience are focused on them. So you need to be focused on what you can offer them. As David's saying here, uh, who am I and why should you care? What are, you, what are my thoughts on that? Um, I think it can be useful. I think that as long as we're putting the audience first, that's what counts. I have done, I did a talk on Sunday and I don't think I mentioned even my name at the beginning because people don't care. People don't care what your name is. You care because you want people to remember your name because you, and when I say you, I don't mean specifically you. I mean you in the French terms of, of vous. Um, what you care that people remember your name because you think that's how they're going to remember you and find you and come and work with you. Actually... What they care about is how you can impact their life. And if when you're speaking, you leave them with enough desire or knowledge that they know that what you have will help them in one way, shape or form, then they will think, ah, excellent. I'm going to go and find out who they are. Did, 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 did he mention his name? You know, oh, oh, you did at the very end oh, and the company name. So then what I will mention is my company name or my name. But towards the end, I said I did this whole talk on Sunday and I don't think I mentioned my name once. I mentioned my company name, but not mine. And then people came and found me and people actually knew who I was. They go, oh, you're Judith, aren't you? Yes, I am. So Sudha, I know Sudha. We have, I missed hers earlier. I was in an interview myself um, and I've been out and about all day. But yes, Sutta Money and I are connected, so thank you. Uh, two, no, two is singular, so vu is the plural. Um, anyway, there we go, Get lost in French grammar. So how can you speak about your business of confidence? Thank you to those who have joined. If you have specific questions for me about speaking about your business, areas that you find challenging, let me know. One of my key premises that I work on with public speaking, vocal confidence, is all speaking is public speaking. So whether you are speaking to one person or a thousand, whether you are doing a Facebook Live or whether you are shopping for shoes, and I will come back to that in a bit, then you are making, when you're expressing yourself, you're taking your inner thoughts, ideas, feelings, beliefs, opinions, and making them public. So all speaking is public speaking. And as most of us here are self-employed, 
when you are speaking, pretty much always you end up speaking about your business. I don't know about you guys, but when someone says to me, how are you? I go, yeah, I'm all right. Business is doing well. I've, you know, I've got a new corporate client that I'm talking to. I have this amazing, it's, again, I just say it's indivisible. So you can be speaking about your business without having to speak about your business. And it's about being able to express who you are from the whole of who you are. And it's about being able to step into the energy and the passion behind your purpose. It's about being able to speak with clarity, with confidence, with conviction, without apologizing. And I don't just mean saying, sorry, we often apologize through tone. And David, I've seen you've just put a question up and I'll come back to that in just a second. And um, I saw someone else has, uh, Syra has put a comment too, so I'll come back to them in just a minute. But for example, I'll take the shoe shop. I was shopping for shoes. Shock, horror, surprise, surprise. Um, I like, I like a bit of footwear and I had three different pairs that I was trying on and I couldn't make up my mind. So the shop assistant said, well, why not buy them all? And I said, my love, when I have more clients, I'll have more money and I will. And she said, what do you do? I said, oh, I am a public speaking, vocal confidence and communication coach and voice vibration sound healer. And she said, oh, that sounds interesting. And I said, yeah, I love it. What I do changes people's lives. She said, how? I said, well, for example, I've got this client who hated going into her team meetings. And she wouldn't raise her hand and ask questions. She uh, would get nervous. She would, she'd got to the point where she would take beta blockers every Thursday morning before going into the team meetings. She came to me. We figured out where those challenges came from. I gave her some tools, some techniques. And now she can go into those meetings without the beta blockers, feeling more confident in herself. This other woman who was shopping for shoes turned around and went, I'm sorry, I couldn't help overhearing what you do. Do you have a card? Oh, my God. That, I've got a friend who's, who's pretty much at that point. She goes, and I hate it too, and I'm looking for someone. So that's what I mean by, A, all speaking is public speaking. You never know who's listening, even if you're out in the supermarket and B, if you're speaking with confidence, with clarity, with the courage of your convictions and the passion behind your purpose, what people hear when you're speaking about your business is not so much the words. And this isn't an NLP thing. I've not studied NLP, but they do touch it with the study that Dr. Maharabian did around um, tone and body language. When people are hearing you, what they hear is whether you're connected to your truth or not. They hear what your passion really is. And that is a vibrational thing. And this is where the voice vibration sound healing comes in because your voice is vibration. And your body, your ego, your subconscious brain and your body are connected. And if you're worried that other people are going to judge you negatively, because we never worry about positive judgments. We forget that there's such a thing as positive judgments. Right? When we hear judgment, we think negative. So if you're worried about what other people will think of you, if you, there's a part of you that thinks, oh, who am I to be saying that? If there's a part of you that is concerned that you don't have enough qualifications or that someone else in the room might have more experience than you or might do the same thing as you, then those concerns are stopping you from actually connecting to your deepest truth and your higher purpose and your passion about what you do and how it positively impacts people and their lives or their business. And if you're not fully connected to that, then people will hear the disconnection because your voice won't be tonally true it you will not sound connected to your thoughts you'll sound like someone who's learnt a networking 60 second pitch and that's great if you're at the very beginning it's good to have structure i'm not knocking learning a pitch it's good to have structure and my background is i'm a classically trained professional actor so of course we have lots of structure 
I have structure around how to find the truth, structure around how to speak, range of tone, placement, posture, body language. So I come with a whole load of structure. But when I'm speaking about my business, it's like, right, who am I speaking to? What audience? I've just come from an hour-long interview where it's been very focused on the spiritual side, the holistic side, the voice vibration, chakra, sound healing, retreat work that I do. I'm now in here talking about business, people who want business tools, business tips. So my top tip is clarity. If you have clarity of thought, if you know what you are wanting to offer your audience, if you have clarity and conviction, then your audience will hear that. So let me go and answer some of the questions. Um, okay. David has a question and Syra. Syra? Syra? I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, Syra, how can I reduce the number of times I say A? I'm assuming that's A, E, A, uh, um, um, A. Uh. Personally, I don't put too much stock in focusing on reducing filler words. They are natural. Filler words happen or filler sounds happen. So some people have filler sounds like er, uh, a, m, mm, er, uh, and other people have filler words. For example, so, or well, you know, or like, as I was saying. So all of those are fillers. I don't put too much stock in trying consciously to alter them. But... If you know that you do that a lot and it comes in a lot, then it can interrupt your audience's thought process. And it does show that there is an overriding sense of either lack of clarity about what you're saying, so you haven't thought it through, or nerves, or confidence, or that there is an uncertainty about why you're there or what you're saying. The number one tool for this, Sarah, is slow down. The reason those filler words come in is because you are trying to think of the right answer, the right word. You're trying to think of where your talk is going next. And because of that, your brain is literally almost spouting out that, um, uh, yes. So... It's often because you're speaking too fast and that's often because of nerves. So when we get nervous, the adrenaline's going, the heart's pumping and we speak faster than we should. And that makes it a little bit difficult for our audience to hear us anyway. But it also makes it difficult for our brain to keep up with our mouth. And that's where sometimes we get lost and the fillers come in. If you slow down, and I don't know if you noticed, but as soon as I started talking about this topic, I deliberately started slowing down the pace at which I was speaking. So I'm still speaking. I'm not speaking like this to think of every word, but I've slowed down. And you can hear in my tone that I'm reaching for a word or that there's a thought process going on behind it. So that's my number one tip for reducing filler words is slow down. My second is if you're doing something impromptu, then this is harder. But if you're doing something like a video, a Facebook Live, a networking pitch, a pitch to a new company, a phone call with someone where you know you're going to be selling what you're selling, then have clarity on what you're going to be saying. And I'm not saying learn a script, but be clear on what main points you want to get across and allow yourself the time and the structure to know when you've hit them. The third tip I have for that is you can say, bear with me a second, while I try to find the right word or while I think of this concept and then often you can ask for help you know, with the audience and you can even if it's a Facebook live you say help me out here it's a concept where and then you can describe the concept 
And then you're giving your brain time to find the words. So I hope that answer is useful. David, have a question. A fault with my speaking when I'm excited, I speed up. Okay, the voice box tightens. I don't sound comfortable in my opinion. What can you do? Okay, slow down. <laughs> it's like magic. If I had a magic wand, I would enable people to slow down. So when we are excited or nervous, again, what happens is our heart is pumping adrenaline and that speeds everything up. It depends on what situation you're talking in, David. So it would be good to know what situations this happens in for you. Is it situations where you know what you're going to be saying or is it impromptu? So for example, this half hour that I'm doing, I've spoken about speaking about your business with confidence quite a lot. I speak about speaking most of the time. I've just done a whole two day workshop on vocal confidence, public speaking, speaking with heart and soul. So I haven't done tons of preparation for this half hour because it's a topic I know inside out, back to front. I know most of the questions I'm likely to get asked. But if it was a topic I hadn't spoken on before, I'd have done more preparation. So in order to reduce your pace, there are a few things you can do. One is literally speak slower. The second is know what it is you really want to say. So have that clarity. If you have the opportunity and it's something that you can practice, then it, and this links to speaking slower and this is an actor's tip. Actors tall, darling. We're getting all very lovey here this evening. Speak it slower when you're practicing it. So if it is a talk that you're going to give and you're going to be giving it when you're practicing at home, A, practice out loud at full volume. Not this. I get people doing this all the time and they think that this is speaking out loud. It's not. Full full volume out loud and slower than you would normally deliver it. Just that little bit slower than feels comfortable. And if you practice a talk that little bit slower, when you go in to deliver it and your heart race is your heart rate is increased because you're excited or because you're nervous, you're, you will naturally speed up. And so having practiced it slower, you will then speed up to a, an understandable, less voice tightening pace. So I hope that is useful. The thing about your voice box tightening and not sounding comfortable, then I would also suggest some breathing exercises and some vocal warm up exercises. Vocal warm up because if you're not a trained singer or performer, you know, your, your vocal cords are muscles. And if you think about going to the gym, if you are going to do a talk, but you are not a trained speaker, by which I mean classically trained, not trained in a formula. So your voice isn't trained to be able to talk for hours without getting tired. If you went to the gym and you're not, you're not used to going to the gym and you went and did an hour of weights, the next day, or maybe even that afternoon, you would be suffering because it would all be tight. Especially if you hadn't done a warm up. So always warm up. The best warm up for your voice is a hum. Mm -hmm. And the trick with humming, hum lower than your voice normally sits and hum higher than it normally sits. And then your what we refer to as your mid range will be more easily accessible. What happens when we get nervous or excited is because everything tightens. So if you haven't warmed it up, it's quite tight anyway. If you've warmed it up, you've loosened it. And when we loosen our vocal cords, our voice drops and it becomes this lovely deep resonant tone. So then if you're a little bit excited and you're speaking that little bit faster, the voice will raise, but it won't raise to a really annoying squeaky tone. I was exaggerating but to get the point across. So do a warm up with humming 
and breath, 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 breath. Breathing is the number one way to slow down your heart rate. It's the reason, it's the core of all meditation. Actors and singers will know this. I'm going to stand up and it's annoying that oh, everything's in the way now. Um, I'm going to just move this and I'm going to move back a bit. So it's annoying that my camera, this is where it's annoying my camera is fuzzy. Um, when we breathe, we actually breathe from here all the way down the base of your ribs to your collarbone. The reason that your rib cage is that massive is because it's protecting your lungs. And most people don't use their full lungs. So when you breathe, when you're doing, not when you're breathing on, um, not when you're breathing on stage and speaking, that's too advanced and technical. But before you go to talk, before you do your video, before you do your Facebook Live, any situation where you get overly excited or nervous, breathe out through your mouth and breathe in through your nose. And when you breathe out through your mouth, your tummy and your ribs should come in. I don't know if you can see it because of the frosty thing. And when you breathe in, everything should come out. So breathe out, everything squeezes in, breathe in, everything expands. If you think of your um, lungs like a balloon, when you breathe out, if you breathe out through your mouth, you're releasing the toxins, you're releasing that adrenaline. And if you, when you let air out of a balloon, it reduces. So when you breathe out, everything should come in. Then you breathe in fully and everything will expand. Do that really slowly about five times before you go to the speaking situation where you get overly nervous or overly excited. And you will reduce your heart rate. And reducing your heart rate sends a message to you, reduces the adrenaline that's going to your brain which sends a message to your brain that says, oh, I'm safe, I don't need to run away. So your brain then sends a message to your body saying, it's okay, heart, you don't have to pump so hard, we're safe. So doing the slow breathing will help you slow your rate of speech. I've just realized, seen we've only got two minutes left. So I'm just going to check if there are any other questions. Sarah, thank you, keep that in mind. You might have to speed up to reduce the erms. We started off slow on the presentation. Um... So if you want to have a quick conversation with me and ask me, just PM me um, and we can talk that out. But you see, there you go. I just threw an urn in. No one's going to shoot me for it. If my talk was peppered with them, it would be annoying. If it's just occasional, don't worry about it. Speeding up will probably increase them, but give it a go. Play. Are there any other questions? questions mention breathing you feel it in your chest exactly so breathe it's really important it's the number one thing for nerve management is breath the number one thing for speaking about your business with confidence because that's what i want you to be able to do is be connected to your deepest truth to the passion that lies in your belly what lights your fire about what you do what drives you what Think of your clients or your customers who you love, who make you just so proud of them and so bloody happy that you're doing what you do. Right? Think of them. That's your passion. That's your gut. That's your belly. That's your root energy. That gets you nice and grounded. And then have a higher purpose. Right? My higher purpose when it comes to my business is to transform the lives of more than 100 million people by creating more confident, connected communicators, leaders, emerging leaders and entrepreneurs who make ripples in the world. Well, your words make waves, literal waves, sound waves. So it's vital to speak with the power of your whole voice. And miraculously, that little tagline includes my company name. So there we go. Thank you so much, David, for giving us all the opportunity to be in here. Thank you for those of you who are here live. Thank you for those who are watching on the replay. As I said, if you have any questions for me at all, please tag me in here so that I can come in and answer them. Because if you have a question, you can bet your bottom dollar that someone else will too. I know that someone else is going to be due to come in here uh, in the next 15 minutes or so. So I will love you and leave you. If you want to find me, 
yourwholevoice.com or my Facebook page is Your Whole Voice. Check it out. Come and play. Uh, David mentioned earlier I have a book. It is. This book, which you can't see properly, it's called Stop Shooting, Start Wanting. And if you don't know what you want, then it's really difficult to express yourself or ask for what you need or tell people who you are or what you want from them as your audience. So know what it is you want for you. Then higher than that, know what it is you want for your audience and to speak about your business with confidence be connected to that passion, be connected to a higher purpose and love what you do, know what it is you want to say, know who you're speaking to, have clarity of thought and you will have clarity of words. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, David. He's just put the link to my website in there. Thank you, Jamila, and everyone else who's been here live and everyone who's watched the replay. Take care, have a lovely evening, and I will see you soon. Bye.